Hello everybody and welcome back to On Point HQ and in this video uh, it's going it to be a brief update into my ongoing bolt action project. Now if you saw the last video <clears throat> you will have seen that I'm currently working on a US Airborne project. Now it's based around Bastogne in 1944, it's got a nice winter theme and it has, it has allowed me to indulge in some creative kit bashing as, as I am prone to do every now and again. This should come as no surprise to anybody. But in that in that video what I outlined was sort of the the, the aim of the project and uh, how I was planning about you know, going about building them, the different kits I was using. Um, and at that point, I'd only really completed one airborne section. Um, things have moved on since then, and I've been <laughs> I've been quite a busy chap. And I've completed pretty much all the support options. This isn't something I'd normally do, um, like many gamers and hobbyists. I, I normally leave these, leave these as a bit of a reward for completing infantry, or in this case, airborne sections. Um, but with these guys, no, I demonstrated a complete and utter lack of self-control and I pretty much completed all of the, the, the different support and HQ options that I'm going to add into the project. So what I thought I'd do in this video would be to show you exactly what I've done, uh, talk you through the various kit bashes and, and throw some up some photographs of, of sort of work in progress shots of what these guys look like uh, before they were painted and based. So without any further ado, let's get on to the first lot. So this is my HQ section. Um, I'm going to call it a lieutenant because it's, a, <clears throat> it's an American project and I've been pulled up on, on my pronunciation of lieutenant and lieutenant before. So I'm going to stick with lieutenant for this one. <laughs> so here's the first lieutenant with the, the chap on the left in the great coat. Again, I'm using winter German great coats. Um, not historically accurate, but from three feet away, meh, they do a job and they look good. Um, so he's made up of a uh, winter German body, a US infantry head, and uh, airborne arms and the guy here is made up of um, US infantry uh, helmet and head uh, the right arm is from I believe that's the US infantry um, and the, the left arm no the left arm I think is, is US uh, is, is airborne as well um, but what you'll notice with this chap is da -da 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 -da, he's a radio operator um, now in my, my German army I, I've included quite a few radio operators um, I think they, they work quite well with HQ sections, um, but with this guy, with these, there, there are none, so I had to kit bash one. <laughs> so on the screen now there'll be a picture of what this looked like before I painted it. It was very simply made out of, I got a US infantry rucksack and sort of filed it all down, then found various you know, square bits of plastic from old tank kits, um, and just, just moulded it onto the back, and then added an aerial, I think it's an old Stuart tank. The aerial's a bit too thick, but... It fits well with the sort of heroic scale of the of these guys. Um, didn't take too long, but there we have it. That's one HQ section with radio operator. So up next, we have a medic team. Now, just like the HQ section is made up of a, a guy in a great coat and a guy in a regular airborne uniform. Now, what I've done with these guys, just to differentiate them, I've absolutely festooned them with all pouches and packs and all kinds. So they've got infantry rucksacks on, there's a couple of um, bags there, pouches there from uh, the US infantry boxes, there's cases, there's all kinds. In fact, the guy with the on the left there, his, his, the, the bag he's carrying there is actually a German, um, oh, get out of focus, a German ammunition box with a few, uh, a few um, Bren gun pouches attached to it. <laughs> so it just looks like a sort of um, a medic's bag. Again, a bit of artistic license, but from three feet away, it's going to look pretty good. Um, and so that's the medic team again just they, they, they quite simple to, to paint and build and you know, various different kits used um, between airborne and infantry but I think they, they look quite they do it they definitely do a job um, I, I do like including medics in, in games of bot action it's a bit thematic so with that I then um, I'm the, the overall project is going to have three bazooka teams in uh, and I've completed two so far so this is the first focus do, do, do. come on so again these are both in, in winter winter German great coats uh, the bazooka is from the the US infantry box uh, but the, the arms fit really well you wouldn't think that was a kit bash to look at it it just it just works really well um, and again the the his assistant the arm again the right arms from the um, US infantry box and the left arm is from the uh, US Airborne box. 
But I think that the, the, the measure of a good kit bash is when it, it doesn't look like a kit bash. And I was really, I was a bit worried about putting the, the bazooka teams together because I thought the arms wouldn't, wouldn't fit with the great coats, but I was really wrong. They've worked really quite well. And then the second bazooka team, so these guys are both, both crouched down. So again, one's got a great coat and one's in a standard uniform. The guy holding the, the, um, the bazooka uh, shell or bazooka rocket, again, that was a bit of a, a kit bash, um, a, bit of, <laughs> a bit of butchery actually. That, that right arm is actually from the uh, British Airborne box. Uh, it's a guy holding a grenade and did a bit of, a bit of, a bit of carving and added um, the bazooka shell uh, from one of the sprues. Um, it was a bit rough to start off with, but no, I think it worked out quite well. And again, just added the equipment there from the uh, the US air bomb. But again, uh, just a really, really nifty little conversion that works, and it it, it, it just looks the part. I was I'm really made up with these bazooka teams. So that's them for out of the way. Now, on to the other bits and pieces. Now. If you've seen my uh, the Polish airborne that I, I, I did, um, I replaced all the the, the metal crews uh, from, the, from the, the, the team weapons in that, and this is no exception. And the first one I made, or the first crew I replaced, was this. So this is the the medium mortar team. Now the, the crew on this, they're all plastic. They've all been replaced, um, and I just think they look better than the the, the original metal metal crew. A bit more character, a bit more, a bit more believability to them. They look a, they look a bit more action, action posed. Um, but they're a combination again of um, airborne and winter German, um, with various bits of arms from more different kits. Again, equipment is always from the US airborne. Um, but again, I mentioned this in the last video. It just demonstrates the versatility of Warlord plastic kits. That that. That looks like a model that you'd get straight out of a, out of a blister. But it's not at all kit bash plastics. But absolutely just goes together and it works really well. So after that I thought I could go and paint some more uh, airborne sort of um, foot sloggers. But no, I worked on this. So this is the... Oh, if we can get that into focus, come on. This is the heavy, mach heavy machine gun team with four crew. Um, this took a lot of work, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. Getting these guys into the poses that I wanted, it, it took a long time. But, it was worth it because I, I just think this works so well. Just the, the, the way they, 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 they're interacting together. They look like a genuine team, like they were built for that, that heavy machine gun. Um, when it actually took quite a bit of work to get to get it to work. It wasn't, it wasn't the, the work as such, it was just getting the poses and getting the, the, the bits and pieces correct. But I think that worked out really, really quite well. And a four-man crew for the, the heavy machine gun team. Getting to focus. So after that, I then thought, well, I'm, I'm, I'm all the way through now, I might as well complete the, complete the lot. So then this was completed and this is the 57 millimeter uh, anti-tank gun um again a bit of work went into it just to get the the the, the pose is correct really i think for me somebody mentioned this on the facebook group is that when i do kit bash it always looks like they're interacting that's something i always purposely go for i think what it does it adds a bit of character um and if you're just using you know the metal crew sometimes they they just like them individuals which if you can kit bash them and get them to work, get them to interact. Um, it goes a long way into making the whole thing look a bit, a bit better. If we can get that into focus. <laughs> so the only thing that's retained really is the um, the 57 mil gun. All I did was so the the shell <laughs> the shell marks on there. Just added with a pin vice, dead easy. Uh, gives it a bit of individuality, makes it look a bit a bit lived in and a bit worn. Getting the base not too over the top, is it? I actually like that base. And the last one, um, this is this is probably the quickest kit bash build and paint I have I've done in a long time. This is actually the forward the forward observation team. Um, 
a lot of work went into it because it it it, it took a while to build it, but the, the painting was was just dead simple. And again, there's a radio on there. Uh, the radio actually took me 45 minutes to build. Um, to apologise for this lack of focus at the moment. There we go. Uh, and Dom, that I do the the Plastic Crack podcast with, uh, he was he was pretty aghast when I when I told him I spent 45 minutes building that radio out of <laughs> about nine different pieces. Again, the aerial's a bit too thick, but I think it fits well with the with the heroic scale. Um, and the guy on the on on the left there, actually on the radio, that's just um, a bog standard arm from the. Um, the airborne box and the the wire is is more bits and pieces than that that Ravel helicopter kit that I've been cannibalizing for the past year or so I'm always finding really good bits and pieces in there but we forward up the observation teams the only really you what well, once they've achieved their purpose um, that they're, they're pretty much redundant in the game so I always like to put them on nice bases um, which I did with this one so there we go so that is pretty much all of the support options finished with this uh, with this forward observation team. Um, and there we go. That's where that's where I'm up to um, thus far. Um, what I'm going to do is, like I said, be, I'm going to put some stills up at the end as well, just to show them a bit in a, in a bit more um, thematic <laughs> thematic approach. Um, but I'm, I'm really enjoying this project. It, it's just a, it's just a lot of fun. And hopefully, um, it demonstrates you know what what they look like before uh, before they're um, before they're painted. Um, but that's where the project's up to. So all that's left for the support options, I need to add another bazooka team uh, and a sniper team, um, and that's that them done. Then I need to add two more airborne sections, and I'm calling the project finished. I'm I'm tempted to add some armor. I want to add a Hellcat because I've never painted one before and it's such a cool and awesome looking model that I really want to add one um, to the project. I also want to add a, um, a scout car as well, an armoured car, but I'll get to that at the, at the end of the project. So that's where I'm up to at the moment. So I just thought I'd do a bit of an update video, show you what I've been up to, um, and they are the fruits of my labour. Got any comments or questions about these or gaming or bolt action in general, uh, just pop them down in the comments section below. Um, but thanks for watching, uh, do take care, may your dice roll well, and I'll catch you all in the next video. So, bye bye for now.